come with me on a gourmet journey to some of the finest luxury restaurants in Mumbai. and welcome to Sugar Spice Nice. My name is Shweta and today I'm sharing with you some of the most exquisite dining experiences that one can have in Mumbai. Mumbai city has a number of opulent places that offer an unforgettable experience when it comes to dining and amidst this vibrant food scene, I've come across seven lavish restaurants that redefine luxury dining in Mumbai. The first place is Tresin, an elegant restaurant serving a blend of Indian flavours through modern representation. This restaurant began in Dubai and now they have their one and only outlet in India in BKC Bandra Kurla complex. The place has a modern setting with hints of teal and gold which amp up the luxurious vibe. In the daytime, it looks gorgeous, but in the night, it's another level. The ceiling is illuminated with so many stars and you'd be literally dining under them. The name Tresind is derived from the French word Tres, and Ind is short for Indian, which means very Indian. And that's exactly what they offer through their delectable 14-course meal here. You get to taste the delicious flavours from various parts of India through their Digga station menu. This begins with an aromatic smoke diffuser on the table. The smoke literally engulfs the entire table and brings forward an atmosphere where you are ready to indulge. It's a floral aroma with hints of lavender and jasmine. Beverages are not included in the Digga station menu, but they do have a selection of artisanally crafted cocktails and mocktails, which one can try off the menu. I'd recommend their Berry Blast. It has a mix of seasonal berries and lemonade and if you enjoy that sweet and sour flavor, the tartiness of berries, you will definitely enjoy this. An innovative drink that you can enjoy here is their passion fruit lava lamb which is prepared right at the table with fresh juice, mixed berries and chilled using blocks of dry ice. Then the indulgence begins. First course is the kohlrabi taco. Kohlrabi is sort of like a turnip. This one has a lot of things in one tiny bite and a very strong flavour of yogurt and chutneys. Second course is a bun kebab. The lower part is like a canopy and the bun is on the top and the raw banana tikki is in the middle. The tart is crispy and the bun and tikki are soft and this leaves a lingering taste of spicy and tangy chutneys. Next course is this achapam. Achapam is usually a rose-shaped cookie made of rice flour but this here is a star-shaped one with amras and black lime chutney. This is a sweet and sour dish and the crunch from the achapam just feels so good. Next is an Asian inspired chart. It's called a Pani Puri Poke Bowl and there's everything in there that you'd never imagine to be in a Pani Puri. There's rice, sweet potato and more. This is actually a total play on textures. The rice and the crunchy puri go along so well and the rest of the filling is very citrusy and just a little bit spicy. If you enjoy Japanese cuisine, you will definitely enjoy this. The next course is again a form of a chart but it definitely doesn't look like one. This is supposed to be broken like this and mixed with the rest of the stuff. The gavar has a beautiful texture, it's crunchy yet it melts in your mouth and tastes a bit like save. It literally brings this chart together. The chart has avocado, chickpeas, microgreens and some chart seasoning and this is a totally new take on chart but such a delightful one and if you have a unique palate to try such things then you should definitely visit this place. Next course is a water chestnut and asparagus salad. It comes with some tomato rasam on the side. The yellow part in the salad is jeera aloo in the form of a foam and the flowers on top are thin crispy potato chips. You're supposed to have one bite of this and then take a sip of rasam. The foam in the salad is smooth and fluffy but the asparagus has quite a bite to it but along with the rasam it's just delectable. Next course is a panyaram and it's made from semolina or rava and it's sitting in a parmesan moili and there is a little bit of gold leaf on top. This texture is rich and creamy and the panyaram is not that strong on flavour but the cheese sauce has a very strong taste which balances the dish. I know many of you might feel that the portion size is too small but the variety that you try is so much. Also each course has really rich and heavy ingredients which make it quite a filling meal step by step. And since it's a Digga station menu, it's meant to offer a variety of flavours in small bites. 
The next course is this tortellini pasta stuffed with blue cheese in an onion nihari sauce. Blue cheese is strong yet the spicy flavor of onion in the sauce helps to tone it down. This is quite enjoyable. The next one is to mark the end of appetizers and starters and the beginning of main course. So this is like a palate cleanser. It's khandvi ice cream. There's fafra on top of it and chili on the side and it's sitting on a base of raw papaya. Now comes the main course. This is jackfruit in a peanut butter curry with malabar paratha. Like all the other courses, this too is is presented so beautifully. Jackfruit and peanut butter is a unique combination. The jackfruit is tender and the curry has a very light texture. But the highlight of the main course and this entire 14 course meal actually is this khichdi of India. It's prepared at the table like this. This is plain khichdi which they top off with 20 regional ingredients from across India. And it's served with a side of chura papar, a dish as simple as a khichdi made into something so unique and delightful. After this, you can repeat any of the appetizers or courses if you want. Then the next course is dessert. First one is textures of milk. Basically milk in different forms. Kind of like a desi tres leches. Next is the imarti waffle with strawberry ice cream. The last course of dessert and this meal are these coffee stones. These are filled with coffee inside and they literally burst into your mouth and that is the end of the indulgence here. The cost of this 14 course meal is about 6,000 rupees plus taxes per person for a vegetarian meal. This is probably the most expensive dining experience one can have in Mumbai but it's a one-of-its-kind experience. From the innovative cuisine to the fine service, there's opulence in every bit of it. And if you are celebrating a special occasion or looking for a once-in-a-while kind of dining experience, then you could try Trescent. This is Peshawari inside the Five Star Hotel ITC Maratha in Mumbai and dining here is nothing less than a royal experience. The hotel is gorgeous to look at and the restaurant is decorated with timeless artifacts which give it such a regal look. This is one of the top rated restaurants in Mumbai and they serve a huge variety of Indian delicacies in vegetarian as well as non-vegetarian options. But if you are dining alone or want to try out different things in one meal, then you can have a single diner experience here. This is a set meal with a few starters, mains and desserts and basically it gives you a gist of the place for one person. Before the food arrives, you also get some lachha pyaz, chutney and papar. These are the starters. This is the tandoori salad, this is the veg seek kebab and there are two pieces of tandoori aloo. These are grilled in an earthen oven or a tandoor which gives this really smoky flavor. The outer thing in the aloo is a scooped potato and it's topped with garlic powder and methi. The filling inside has bits of green chilli which give it a hot taste but the cashews and raisins in it balance it out with their sweetness. The tandoori salad has grilled onions, capsicum, tomatoes, cottage cheese and pineapple and it is seasoned with some garam masala. All of it is nicely charred and makes for a good way to begin this meal. The next part of this meal is the main course. This is paneer makhani sabzi with the bread of your choice and it is served with dal bukhara and raita. The paneer makhani here has a thick and rich gravy with huge chunks of paneer and it's very creamy, very buttery. Every bite will give you a taste of the heavy ingredients inside it. This is fudina paratha. This just by itself is so flavorful and has that right texture. The dal is also super rich and smooth. Even the raita is so creamy, the thickness of the dahi adds up to the flavor. After this, you choose between one of the desserts, rasmalai, firni, kulfi or gulab jamun. The entire meal costs around 3000 rupees with taxes. The quantity of food might seem less, but it is quite sufficient for one person. The remarkable taste, ambience and service truthfully make this a regal experience. Now, if you want to experience dining in a supreme palace in Mumbai, then it's got to be the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. As legendary as this hotel is, the one thing that is unparalleled is this view. This is from the sea lounge at the Taj Mahal Palace at Kulaba. The hotel itself is a heritage luxury hotel and one of the most expensive hotels not just in Mumbai but also in India. Just like the entire hotel, the restaurant also has that palatial feel and a royal touch in every nook and corner. And it also offers this delightful view of the gorgeous Arabian Sea and the Gateway of India. You can relish Indian and European cuisine here, but a fun way to explore all the flavors of this place is by trying the high tea buffet. This begins at 3.30 in the afternoon. The spread is quite huge, there are fresh fruits, there's a chart counter, sandwiches, Indian snacks and a huge dessert counter and all of this is unlimited. They also offer a special option in the buffet wherein they bring a royal charlie to the table filled with exclusive treats that are not a part of the buffet spread. It has some bread and freshly made jam, 
Above this are some special sandwiches and quiche. The quiche is small enough to be just popped in the mouth and it literally bursts with cheese. The sandwiches in this are quite unique and it looks like a pastry but it's actually a cheese tomato sandwich. And on top is the dessert. There are chocolates, macarons, tarts and pastries. All of these are almost like delicacies and sitting by this view enjoying the royal treatment actually makes this all worthwhile. The cost of this high tea buffet including the Charlie is about 4,500 rupees plus taxes per person and here's what the whole buffet looks like. The chaat counter here serves bhel puri, sev puri, dahi chaat, pani puri and most of it directly comes at the table and the chaat here is refreshingly good. But there's more to the buffet than this chaat. There's a whole bunch of Indian snacks like pav bhaji, hara bara kebab, paneer rolls and some potatoes. And in the farsan section there is patra, khandvi, white dhokla and kothmir vadi. It's a delight to see so many local snacks in a buffet. You also get tea, coffee and even iced tea here but the section that you absolutely cannot miss is the desserts. There is sponge cake, chocolate cake, pastries, chocolate covered strawberries, fruit tarts, macarons, cupcakes, chocolates, cookies and so much more. The variety and the taste of each of these delicacies here is so impressive and also just the way they present it, it's such a beautiful looking buffet. To add to that is the fact that you're actually eating in the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel with this gorgeous view of the infinite sea and the gateway. Every aspect of visiting this palace adds a certain novelty and luxury to this experience and the excellent Taj hospitality just makes it better. I think if I would have to pick one of my favorite indulgent dining experiences ever, it would have to be this one at the Sea Lounge. The view, the food and the ambience are all unforgettable. From one end of Mumbai to the other, here's a memorable Asian dining experience at the Goma, a fine dining pan-Asian restaurant in Goregaon at the Radisson Blue Hotel. This place offers authentic flavors from all over Asia. You can mainly enjoy Japanese, Chinese and Thai delicacies here. The place has a modern and a very contemporary ambience. The lighting, the ceiling, the seats, everything just makes it a more classy and elegant affair. There's also this beautiful bar area where you can sit and watch them craft some artisanal drinks. I'd recommend their blue pea tea and refreshing anthocyan. These are two of the beautifully crafted drinks and a perfect pairing with all of the meals here. They also have a partly open kitchen where you can see how they prepare sushi and probably some appetizers as well. In terms of food, there's a good balance of vegetarian and non-vegetarian options and they also serve dishes in the Jain and vegan options as well. If you are trying authentic Asian food but looking for that slight Indian flavor, then there's nothing better than their veg manjao soup. But if you want to jump straight to the goodness, then you can try their spiced yuzu prawn soup if you are okay with non-vegetarian. It has a few veggies and prawns but it stands out because of how it's served. Another great introduction to authentic Asian flavor are their dim sums and baos. This is the mushroom bao and is presented so artistically. It's filled with mushrooms and veggies and the covering is quite soft and dense. The taste is quite unique but if you enjoy mushrooms then these will please you both with their looks and their taste. In dim sums, if you enjoy the most subtle flavors then you can go for the edamame and truffle dim sums. The covering on these is absolutely melt in your mouth and the filling too. It has a smooth flavor of edamame beans and a subtle hint of truffle oil. Another option in dim sums are the water chestnut dim sums in Beijing sauce. The Beijing sauce is a savory surprise actually. It's sweet, it's tangy, it's a little spicy and a complete play on those flavors. Another flavorful dish to try is their turnip cake. It has crispy fried turnip but it's soft inside. It comes with loads of garnish of spring onions and fried garlic. The turnip has a nice texture but a very simple taste and the garnish just adds so much zing to it. If you relish such heavy garnish, especially of fried garlic, then you will definitely enjoy the burnt garlic fried rice. Apart from the fried rice, there are some edamame beans and a few veggies inside and the rice is a little sticky. These go well with this hot garlic sauce. There are chopped bell peppers, zucchini and carrots in this. The crunch from the veggies and the hotness from the sauce pairs very well with the rice. One more option in the main course is their udon noodles. These are flat noodles tossed with vegetables and sprouts and some sauce. It is a little hot and sweet and a very enjoyable dish in itself. Best way to end this meal is with one of their delectable desserts. They have a good variety of Asian desserts but nothing really hits home like a classic cheesecake. This is their classic cheesecake with a side of fresh cream and fruits and some blueberry ice cream as well. But if you enjoy chocolatey desserts, then you should try the hazelnut roulade with chocolate mousse and chocolate ice cream. This platter is made for all the chocolate lovers out there. It's got chocolate in all forms for you to enjoy along with mousse and ice cream. There's also molten chocolate, dark chocolate bark, 
crunchy hazelnut so so good the attention to detail and the touch of authenticity in these dishes turn dining at goma into a cherishable moment that elevates the meal that you have here goma is the epitome of a modern restaurant but here's another luxury restaurant that has carried the legacy of indian cuisine This is Masala Bay, another place to experience the grand hospitality of Taj at the Taj Lands End in Bandra. This hotel too offers a beautiful sea view and a must visit here is this Indian restaurant. It has a classy yet cozy vibe and the specialties here are Mughalai and Indian dishes. Your meal here begins with a huge papad platter. There are two to three different kinds and there's a red tomato chutney as a dip which really complements the papad. This is broccoli shorba. It's even got a few almonds in it and it's such a healthy start for a meal here. This is palak pata chaat. It is nice and crispy and the taste from palak and the chutney is the he goes so well together. In terms of starters, I'd recommend the paneer tehdar and nimona tikki. The paneer tehdar is basically cottage cheese cooked in a red marinade. It's not too spicy but it's got that hotness from the garlic in it. The nimona tikki Tikki is made from green peas. It also has cheese and it just melts in your mouth as soon as you have it. The appetizers come with a side of their garlic pickle, which is made in house. In the main course, you can enjoy a variety of Indian delicacies. I enjoyed their dum aloo banarasi. The gravy is made of tomatoes. It has a strong flavor of kasuri methi, and even the color is just so tantalizing. Another sabzi you must try here is the lessoni palak because of its creamy texture and garlicky taste. This also has a bit of fried garlic on top. If you enjoy the richer and thicker gravy sabzis, then you can go in for their. dal makhani and the kofta as well both have such a dense texture especially the kofta it's a cashew gravy and it's topped with almonds and the kofta itself is made of cottage cheese these sabzis pair well with naan or kulcha if you enjoy rice more than rotis then their sabz dum biryani will really make you happy and to end this indulgence one can try their desserts a must try is the kulfi just like the rest of the meal here it is rich and creamy and topped with faluda rose syrup and rabri dining here may feel a little bit casual but it's cozy and their impressive food definitely uplifts the entire experience Another place that will instantly transcend you into a realm of desi flavors with a modern twist is Masala Library by Jigs Kalra. This place also has a 14 course meal inspired by various regions of India and prepared using modern cooking techniques. The place has got a very classy yet rustic kind of a vibe. The lights, the chairs, even the plates instantly prepare you for a luxurious indulgence. This here is your chef's tasting menu which begins with the amoos bush which means getting our palate ready for the upcoming delights. This is the lemongrass hibiscus and rose water pani puri and inside is a watermelon pastrami which is basically watermelon made to taste and feel like pastrami. On the top of the puri is sev and some chutney and it's supposed to be filled with this water. The puri is very crunchy and the pani is a refreshing mix of sweet and sour flavors. Then there is dahi pana kota with some raspberry chutney in the center and boondi on the side. The texture of the dahi pana kota is so smooth and the tartiness of the raspberries pairs so well with it. Next course is the quintessential beginning of any meal but it doesn't look like it. This tiny delicate leaf is actually masala papar with some chutney and chopped tomatoes. This intricate leaf is the papar and this is actually chutney foam. You're supposed to scoop it like this and take a bite. This is crunchy and the chutney foam just spreads in the mouth and the tomatoes give it that little tanginess. This place also has mocktails that go with the restaurant's fusion theme. So this is a curry leaf martini. It has a very apparent flavor of curry leaves, but it's mixed with sugar syrup, and it's really delicious. Another fusion mocktail is the Garden of Five Senses. This is a mix of fruits and rose water. This one is quite sweet and refreshing. The next course is the chili cheese toasty with purple potato chips on top. Everything here is made in house, and there are actually four different kinds of cheese here. This whole thing is dipped in maple syrup. There are also some peppers inside. The chips on top are amazing. They add such a crunch to this toasty, and all the flavors. us kind of hit you together the cheese the sweet syrup the chips so yum next course is the broad bean tartlet inside is actually sag or a gravy made from broad bean leaves and on top are the broad beans with a bit of tempura the flavor is so good it's slightly sour because of the strawberry vinegar used in it next we have sali kathal it's a piece of jackfruit covered in thinly sliced potato sallies potato sallies are really thin potato wafers or chips it's also topped with this sauce the jackfruit is really tender and the potato around it is crunchy and the sauce gives it a sweet and tangy flavor 
Next, we have the Pindi Chole Kulcha. This is mashed chole on top of a tiny kulcha and there's also some chutney. And on top of the chole is an in-house made ginger pickle. The pickle adds a bit of hotness to this and because the chole is mashed, it instantly melts in your mouth. Next course is the Dahi Ke Kebab. It's made from hung curd and cheese and it's topped with some peppery sauce and chutney. Usually these kebabs melt in your mouth instantly, but these ones have a little bit of a bite because of the cheese and even the outer texture adds to that bite. Next course is a potato bonda mochi which is sitting in a peanut butter salan and on the side is the peanut and garlic chutney. It is so soft and the flavor of potato with peanut and garlic chutney is mind blowing. And even though there are those ingredients that make this a fusion, it still feels like an actual bonda vada. The next course is a squash blossom poshto served with tomato chutney. This is a zucchini flower and a zucchini fruit attached because it's just blossomed and about to ripe. And the flower part is stuffed with poshto which is a Bengali speciality. This fruit feels like a tender zucchini pakora actually and the flower part with the tasty poshto inside is a burst of flavors especially mustard. After this comes the paneer fudina tikka. It's sitting on a chunda and on the side what looks like vermicelli is actually a kataifi nest. It's kind of like a shredded pastry. Now we have the last appetizer of this meal. This is bhutte ki keys with tandoori baby corn and masala caramel popcorn. This is extremely flavorful and the smoky flavor is somehow retained in the tandoori baby corn. Before the main course, we get a palate cleanser and this is mishti doi popsicle. It's topped with some strawberry jam and a little bit of amaranth or rajgira. Finally, it's time for the main course in which you get options for the choice of sabzis and it's served with dal makhani, papar and roti. You can get bhindi chai piazza which is basically four different textures of onion and there are also bits of tomatoes and some crispy fried onion on top. The onion flavor in this is so strong so onion lovers this dish is for you and it also kind of enhances the overall flavor of the bhindi. Another sabzi option is the paneer burrata lababdar. These are two different types of cheese that complement each other in terms of taste and texture and it's set in a rich looking gravy that leaves a slight sweetish aftertaste. The dal makhani here is topped with methi and it's very thick and creamy. This has a strong flavor of garlic, methi and whole spices. And after this, you can basically repeat whatever you want. But the beauty of this tasting menu is that the portion is controlled. So you can relish a variety of flavors and yet not feel like you've overindulged. Next course is dessert. There are two. First one is sardo shahi tukda. There is vanilla ice cream with sardo in there and ginger snap tool. All of this comes together in one bite and it is just wow. The feel of the ice cream with fried bread, all of it just melts away in the mouth. Second dessert is the jalebi caviar with pista and rabri and saffron foam. The caviar is crunchy like jalebi and the foam makes this so light and airy. And this ends the 14 course indulgence here at the masala library. The ambience, the presentation and the flavors of this place work in harmony and take you on a journey that pays homage to India's culinary legacy while embracing modern innovation. The 14 course meal isn't just about savoring the food, it's about immersing yourself in a sensory experience of delectable Indian cuisine. This entire meal here costs about 2,900 plus taxes. Last in this list is a 24-7 cafe inside yet another luxurious hotel in Mumbai. This is the Lotus Cafe in JW Marriott in Juhu. This is a gorgeous restaurant with a beautiful garden view and tasty food. You can enjoy mainly Asian, Italian and North Indian dishes here and they also have Sunday brunches as well as meal buffets on weekdays. The highlight of their breakfast buffet is their focus on healthy dishes. You get whole fruits, cut fruits, detox juices, leafy greens and salads to begin a healthy morning. They also have a cheese platter, cold cuts, cereal and Indian breakfast items like misal pao, chole puri, upma, idli, poha. There's also a live counter for dosas and parathas and a few local specialities like today they have dhokla and jalebis. Then of course there's a pastry section where you can get muffins, croissants, danishes, slice cakes and more. But other than the dessert section, the buffet for me stood out because it has so much in terms of local snacks and specialities as compared to western dishes. And if you believe that breakfast should be the biggest meal of the day, then you should definitely try out the one that offers such a huge variety. You can enjoy this breakfast buffet between 7am to 11am. The cost for one person is about 1500 rupees plus taxes. The location and other details 
for the Lotus Cafe and all the other places from this video are given in the description box below. So do check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really had a fun time sharing some of my favorite luxurious dining spots in Mumbai with you guys. I agree that the prices are a bit high, but so is the experience and the treatment. And the luxury here lies in the abundance of choices, attention to our diverse tastes and focus on artisanally crafted delicacies. Let me know in the comments which one of these places caught your eye. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Also subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video with more fun places. Bye!